Oh. Hello, this is Josh, and Laura's behind the camera, and this is our day 22 vlog. And so today we want to do a little bit of a different thing. We want to actually show you how we use our juicer, because many of you have asked, um, how do you actually juice the fruits and vegetables that you juice? So, um, over here you can see basically how most of our juicer looks throughout the day. We disassemble it and dry it and wash it, so this is how it looks. And I'll just kind of tell you what the parts are as I put them on here. This is what collects the pulp. Put it on the back. This is where the juice collects and then pours out into the container. This is our blade that actually spins around really, really fast and then chops up the pulp, sends the pulp away, and then the juice goes through the little mesh there. Of course, it's the feed tube and the top so it doesn't spill out. This is a lock bar, and actually, when this is down, the juicer will not function. So it has to be up and locked in order for this to actually spin around, which is good. This will collect all the juice in the container, and then this is the push to push it down the feed tube so that it gets all the way down and juices. Of course, you want to just make sure it's off before you plug it in. But then you're ready to go. So the assembly is actually pretty easy. Let me take you over here. Um, I've kind of put together some ingredients. So some of you, um, actually Nicole, thanks for your question. I, I thought this would be a better way to answer your question than actually doing it out loud and just talking about it. But we have um, suggested some recipes to you, from, for you from the past. Um, but this would be a good example of how, how we usually do our meals. I go into the fridge <laughs> and I look for uh, lots of green vegetables and then I find out maybe some other halfly, half used fruits or um, like peppers and those kind of things. And I, that's how I kind of just compile what our meal that night is going to be. So tonight we have um, kale that I've kind of chopped with. This is the fresh kale from Naturally Yours. Um, we have red pepper and I've got it cut in fourths in here. So I've got two fourths left. I'm only going to use one fourth of those. I've got three stalks of celery and I've actually already washed out all this before. Uh, I'm going to use two of the three stalks of bro broccoli. And then I, I use our apples as fillers, so we'll see how many we need of those, but I want to make sure that we have enough juice for both of us to juice tonight. And we're looking to get probably about 30 ounces of juice. Um, then I have a halfly eaten apple and an Asian pear. So we'll see what we end up doing here. But um, basically how you want to start the process is you want to go and you want to start with the softest things possible. Um, so, yep, let's take a pause real quick here. So, sorry about that, we had a little child incident there. Um, so basically, as I was saying, you need to start with something soft first and then kind of work up to your hard vegetables. So of these, I would say probably my kale is on the soft side, my pepper, and my celery. So we're gonna go ahead and take those things over. Now kale, you realize, doesn't actually juice that well. Um, in other words, you don't get a lot of juice out of kale. It's got some, the most nutrients of um, any vegetable that you're going to juice, and so you definitely want it um, in your juices. Tell me how you wrap it. Oh. How you put it in. Well, What's the... usually you want to wrap it if it's the big leaves, so it can kind of go in a circle. I've actually already broken them in half, so this way you don't need to wrap it. Okay. That... That's fine. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> So let me turn this on here for us, and I've got it set now. We have a different speed setting if you want to over to this. Down here. So speed one is for soft fruits, then speed two is for citrus. Speed three, it goes up just the citrus as well. Four Sorry. is for apple and pineapple. Right here. And then five is for the hard vegetables. So you know, if you if you have yours on a lower setting, or if you only have two settings for your, your machine, that's not a big deal. But for this one, for kale, I usually think of it as when it's a little bit harder. So I put it on set, setting three um, or four and just get it to work there. So let's just try it out as we go along here. So you can kind of watch it as the juice and of course it pours out there. The more stock you have on your kale, the more juice you're going to get. The majority of the juice. The majority of your juice will come out of this, the stock here. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there. That's actually a pretty good amount. That will put a little bit more for both of us. Okay, so 
So as you can see, we're not getting a ton of juice out of this, but that's really where the nutrients are going to come in a lot. Here we have our celery in there. I'm just going to feed it in there. That was pretty quick. And then our quarter of a pepper. I don't really prefer a strong pepper taste because um, it will kind of go through all your all your stuff. Now here's the broccoli. Um, this is once again the stem is where you have a lot of the nutrients. So I put the stem in there. Put a head down. Broccoli doesn't juice that well actually. It's not. But it's really good in juice. It is. It's got a nice sweet calm taste to it. Okay, so now we're getting close Woo. to the end. Sorry about that. My camera skills aren't as good as I thought they were. <laughs> so this is a half an apple, you know, random fruit we find in the, in the kitchen with a store in there. And you should try to stick to a four now. This is an Asian pear, which is a lot in texture like an apple. It's a little bit too big to fit down the feet too. So we're going to go ahead and put it all in there. If I keep it right now. There we go. Okay, just a minute. And you can see the pear will juice a lot more than our vegetables. So that's why I call them fillers because they actually fill in a lot of what things you don't have. Now remember on your apples and oranges, like I said, I've already pre-washed these, but you want to make sure you get the tags off them. Or pits out of them, depending on what you're doing. But as you can see, we're throwing the whole apple in there, stem, seeds, and all, because it will sort them out for us. Oh, there's the apple that's a little bit too big. And that will work. Remember, the apples, which are really good, they, they taste nice. Um, they add a lot of calories and carbs to your diet. So, even though they're a good filler, you don't want to do too many of those. We do have probably need for one more. And I'm going to get that uh, sticker out there. Good thing to do the poison over there. And there you go. So basically we just made a 30 ounce juice. I always like to tip it over a little bit because there's extra juice that gets caught in that, the trap. And then it will kind of leak a little bit after you're done, so I put it up over the top of the sink. So here you have 30, 30 or so ounces. Now the top of this foam there, and so you can't count that as being juice. Generally it doesn't taste as good as the juice itself. Um, so. You know, one thing that I was, was going to show you that you could do is we have our blender over here and oftentimes we'll pour this in there, we'll put some ice cubes in there and just kind of blend it up, liquefy it and that really helps just kind of make it cooler and it's going to go down a little bit smoother. Um, be aware though, you're getting less juice when you put ice in there because it's, the ice is in there so you probably want to drink a little bit more than you normally drink on those days. So the last thing I want to do is I want to take you through the process of cleanup because some of you are asking what kind of commitment is this when I'm making the juice. And I showed you all the parts before, but basically um, it's a pretty easy clean. It just takes time. You look good washing dishes. Oh, thanks baby. You should do that more often. You look better at doing it. <laughs> now we're sticking all of our stuff down the sink, but... Right, right. In fact, we were going to say this, uh, we were actually giving, Ooh, for the most, we're, we were giving at, um, just last week, all of our stuff to a friend of ours, Ann, who composts, and she just got her own juicer, and now she's getting enough compost for herself. So if anyone's interested in compost, it's in the normal Bloomington area, and would like to come pick it up, just let us know. Um, but that would be a great way to reuse what we're doing, and not just throw away all of this stuff. So, just separate everything out. I have this kind of brush. They included a brush inside the juicer, which is a lot smaller than this. And for me, this just kind of gets the job done faster. It's the same kind of bristles as they're using. Um, 
but you really want to kind of clean it out well because otherwise the pulp will stick in there and we'll discolor it. As you kind of seen, we've been trying to keep these clean. There's a little bit of a brown. And you want to use soap because there's right. unclean citrus. So my process is generally two steps, and I apologize for the delay, but I like to rinse things out first, and then I like to put some soap on it, and then rinse it off there. But uh, if you don't want to compost, and you don't have any friends who like to do that as well, yeah, uh, your, the, you need to open up to the camera. We're getting all your back. Your, uh, Garbage will just do the job pretty well. So, I mean, it's all cut out already. So there's nothing that big in there. And uh, it's all pretty much usable. Let me give a pause real quick here. Okay, so now we're just going to do this real quick. Put some soap on your thing. So, you're probably going to look at this and, and uh, chide me for the way I wash the dishes, but. This does a good job. We air dry all of our stuff, so it dries a little bit better. Using hot water, of course. And basically just doing like you would do. I like to put my fingers around it so there's nothing sticking in the top there, the cracks and those kind of things. And these pieces are actually um, top shelf or top dishwasher. rack dishwasher safe, yeah. Yep. But, um, I think we just wanted to be sure or that we were taking good care of it and so we went for hand washing. Right, and as much as you use them, I mean, if you're going to be doing the 60 day fast or even like a two week fast, you're going to be using them like three times or four times a day. And so that's a lot of wear on your dishwasher as well as on the, the parts when you put them in the dishwasher. Yeah, and you'd be, you'd be running an empty dishwasher with just those parts in there. Yeah, so we don't like to, to do that and I think it keeps our blades a little bit sharper. So. Our uh, sister Katie tells us that she should avoid the. Oh, oh, this is the important one you're going to want to show people how to do. Okay. Because so, this is the blade. So I like to spin around on the blade because oftentimes, if you're doing citrusy things, they'll kind of get caught in the blades. So spin it around and then also rinse on the sides with the mesh. You want to make sure you get all the pulp, pulp off there. Then I go on the backs as well. This one can get discolored pretty easily, so they suggest that if you are seeing some discoloration, to put it like soak it in maybe some lemon juice. Uh, water with a tenth of a part of lemon juice. There you go. And don't leave it in there super long. Let it soak for maybe five minutes and take it out, and that'll also take extra pulp out of the mesh. So you should um, be clean on both sides there. Yeah, but if you uh, let it soak in the lemon juice too long, it will take the finish off of your blade. So. Know, dude. Huh? How do we know that? Uh, we know that because I did it. I let it soak <laughs> for maybe a half an hour. It didn't work out so well. And actually, I, I would have never known that either. That half an hour was too long. So, you know, probably five, ten minutes and that is good. Um, but your stainless steel, so I mean, it does a good job of cleaning up. But once again, just rinse it off there. I mean, what I what I think about this process is, it, is it, it's kind of a form of discipline. I mean, when you kind of get in the groove of what you're doing, it becomes a lot easier, and if you're just mentally ready that you're going to have to clean this up after every single time, it's good. Nicole, you also asked a question about, do you, is, it, okay. <laughs> is it okay to juice um, in uh, like larger quantities than just one? And I think yes, that's for sure. Like So for lunch, oftentimes I'll juice for lunch and dinner because we're doing heavy on vegetables for both. Um, and so if you're going to be doing that, just remember that after 24 hours, your juice will begin to start losing some of its nutrients and then you're going to be kind of having a hard time with that. So that's our demonstration. Our quick update is um, I lost another pound today. So I'm down 28 pounds. And um, I'm not sure. I didn't measure my, my waist this morning. But hopefully the inches are getting there. Um, Alex wants to say hi to you as well. Can you say hi, Alex? Say hi, Alex. <laughs> Laura, how, what are you doing? I lost another pound. So we're doing great. You got some stuff in your face. Do you know that? Look at that belly. <laughs> He's eating, uh, he had a big apple for lunch this afternoon. Was it your apple yummy? Do you have a good apple? Was it yummy? Can you say yes? Is it yummy? Say bye bye. Alright, so bye -bye. thanks for watching. We will come back and report to you tomorrow. And uh, we did have some questions that came today. We'll answer those tomorrow as well. Thanks for asking. Talk to you soon.